my friends and welcome to beautiful Indianapolis, Indiana. I've actually never been here before in my life and I'm really excited to be here because I am here for the Places for Bikes conference put on by People for Bikes. And it's a conference with hundreds of elected leaders from all over the country who wanna make biking better in their communities. And you know I love bikes and that's why I'm here and we're gonna make a lot of new friends this week. People come here because they want to improve their cities overall and they want to do it through bicycling and they want to do it quickly and in a smart way. So they're going to get inspiration and best practices and uh, just going to get fired up and feel like they can achieve. And we're going to help them do that and we're going to do it in 48 hours starting right now. This has been a remarkable journey here in Indianapolis over the last uh, eight, eight years or so. Uh, bicycling for this city. We set out and got very, very aggressive and had a goal of putting 200 miles of bike lanes and trails into place uh, by the end of my term in 2015. It's time for Draft, and Draft is an event they do all over the country actually, and it's a mix of beer and speakers and inspiration and just mingling and bike love. of the UCI is to promote cycling worldwide, um, working with 190 national federations, but it's not only to develop um, bike racing within the 190 federations, it's also promoting cycling as a form of transport. All right, that was awesome. These people are amazing. I am super inspired. And it was only one afternoon. I still have two full days left. <sighs> Better get some rest. We're getting to see examples of the, the, the best uh, outreach work, the best encouragement work, the best infrastructure work that's going on in the country. Building better bicycle places to bike in Tucson does great things for our community, especially obviously for public health and environmental health, but also for the equity of our community. You know, Tucson's a relatively poor city and we have a lot of people who depend on biking and walking and transit to get around. So it's really important that we're serving the needs of all Tucsonans, um, but also the more we make bicycling accessible for, for everyone, for my mom, for my grandparents, for our kids, um, the better our community is going to be, the healthier we're going to be, the better connected our community is going to be, the more visible and beautiful and thriving uh, we'll be. We'll be a place people want to come. Look, I love bikes because of the flexibility that it provides, uh, that it provides you. Uh, to be able to commute, just to be able to enjoy recreationally the community that I live in, um, bikes are just a, a, core part of, uh, a core part of life. So in Tennessee, we're making cycling uh, easier for people by one, number one, big thing is policy. We're putting in place uh, policy to make sure that uh, the way we design our roads uh, throughout the state are more conducive to cycling. I think a lot of careful thought and attention has gone into selecting the speakers of this conference. Um, it's one thing to get a national figure um, who's inspiring and has an inspiring story. But to have someone who cut their teeth working at the local level, uh, in the mayor's office, making decisions that ultimately would shape the future of their city, that's what so many of us are trying to do. And uh, Valerie Jarrett was a, a truly inspiring keynote speaker. What gives me optimism right now is being here with you. And you see people who are, you could all be at work and you're here advocating for something you believe in. So to the degree that we can all not spend time kind of being critical of things we can't control, but look at what we can do and figure out how to be intentional and positive in your own lives. Since this is a bike conference, we probably should ride some bikes. Tell me about the cultural trail. Yep, so it's an eight mile urban bike and pedestrian path in downtown Indianapolis. It also doubles as a linear park. It connects all of the city's greenways. It intersects with our bike lanes that are on street, our bus system, and we have the great Pacers bike share system that was built on top of the trail. I'm liking these twinkly lights. Our tour guide just said that there's been over $4 million invested in art along the cultural trail. That's pretty impressive. We do clear it of snow and ice in the winter and we make sure that it's always lit. So that safety is never really someone's concern if they're on the cultural trail. I gotta be honest, I really didn't know anything about Indianapolis before coming here. 
And now that I'm here, I'm really impressed. All right, let's play with some e-bikes. Electric bikes get more people out on bikes. And life on two wheels, we all believe life on two wheels is a little bit better. This is amazing. I had no idea how much fun this would be like. You can choose which level of boost that you want for your ride and it just makes it a little bit smoother, a little bit more supercharged and you can kind of choose how much energy you want to expend. Electric bikes are so fun. I love these things. You barely have to pedal and you just start cruising. I mean, you're still getting a little bit of exercise even though you're on an electric bike. It's good for you. You're getting outside, you're breathing fresh air. One of our goals is basically putting as many smiles on the road as we can. Because uh, it's, it's fun to ride, it's a lot, and it's, it's a good exercise. Um, so we'd like to see more and more of these Faradays all over the states. I mean, you can't like have a bad time on a bicycle ride. Uh, they're just pure joy, lots of fun, and you know, they make people happy and bring people together. So I'm really excited. Tonight we are unveiling our much anticipated city ratings, which is a new system to evaluate how cities are doing for bikes. We have cities in the audience who are getting awards and they don't know what they're getting yet. So we're really, we're really pumped to present them with a little something to uh, thank them for their progress on helping build better places for bikes. It's fantastic because we are all working towards the same thing, right? And uh, we want to make cycling better. We want to make we want to grow it nationally. And so we each, as different communities, have a role to play to uh, make cycling great. And so we learn from one another, and that's what it's all about. And the city rating system is a, is a way for cities to understand what kind of impact they're having for bicycling in their community on an annual basis. It's data driven, it uses numbers and facts and figures from more than 47,000 different communities here in the US and lets us set achievable goals in the future that says, hey, we've done a lot of really great things for bicycling, but we still have a lot of work to do and let's get that work done fast. But ultimately, let's set targets and goals that help us achieve international success. I don't wanna keep going to Copenhagen and Amsterdam to show cities how bicycling can be done. I want to go to Tucson, Arizona. I want to go to Oklahoma City. I want to go to places here in the U.S. that are world-class examples for bicycling. And this tool lets cities set those benchmarks and move to make them a uh, reality much faster. All right, I am leaving here very, very inspired. I've only been here 48 hours, but it seems like an entire week. I've gotten to meet people from all over the country and the world and everybody out there is doing such great things to make cycling better in their communities and that leaves me with a lot of hope. So I will see you out there hopefully on your bikes. If you like bike content, if you like getting outside, if you like getting off your couch and enjoying the best of this world, please like and subscribe. I'm always producing fun videos. See you next time.